parents, especially the culture I come from, are quite distressed when they find out that their children masturbate. In fact, in Africa, in my time, if you were caught masturbating, you'd have to face serious consequences. Some parents would beat their children. Others were even putting pepper into the private parts of their children. But masturbation is something that almost everybody does. Children do it. So the real question is, how do I talk to my children about masturbation? How do I react when I find my children masturbating? Now, this is a very difficult topic because a lot of parents believe that masturbation is a sin. In their religion, it's a sin. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at masturbation, how to react when you find out your children are masturbating, how to clear them up on masturbation. Is masturbation something abnormal? Is it against religion? Watch this video to the end and I hope I would have answered all those questions. Now before I go into the topic, let me start by welcoming you all back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on here again. I really try to do videos that discuss a range of topics that are of interest and relevance to people. And if you are new here, please do hit the subscribe and notification button because I post regular videos. Masturbation is something that is quite natural because human beings have feelings, they have desires sexually related to their physical body. Not just human beings, even animals masturbate. The bat would even virtually give itself a blow job. To ejaculate. And other animals too, like the turtle, do the same. They rub their private part on a stone to ejaculate. So, having these feelings and desires are very, very natural and they are very, very necessary for procreation because it is the desire for sexual intercourse that makes human beings copulate and that gives rise to children. Without this desire, there will be no procreation or procreation would start becoming an unnatural thing. So God in his wisdom gave human beings these urges and needs just like every other animal. And how does masturbation come about? When there is this desire and urge in the body and it cannot be fulfilled because you don't have a partner or so, then that's when people resort to masturbation. Now, this can happen even in very young children. In fact, even babies, young children, feel the sensation when they touch their private parts. It's not yet the same sensation as when the body is developed. But you would often see that if you are feeding a baby, especially a male child, and they don't have a nappy on, a lot of them will grab on their private part and be holding on to it and rubbing it. Yes, you would even see little children getting an erection from that. So this is something that is very natural and we shouldn't condemn it. 
medically, there's nothing wrong with masturbation. There are a lot of funny stories going around that if a man masturbates, he will have erectile dysfunction, he will have premature ejaculation. That's not true. Masturbation has actually been shown to relieve stress, to really be a healthy thing, provided you don't overdo it. Just like everything in life, when you masturbate too often, you can injure yourself. Also, it really depends on the kind of thoughts you have when masturbating. Because if you have a lot of perverted thoughts and fantasies, you might find you have a problem when you now want to have regular sexual contact with one partner. Also, if you do it too much, you may injure yourself. So, as long as it is done decently and it doesn't affect your everyday life, like you say, I can't go to work because I'm at home, I have to masturbate also. When it's done decently and privately, then there's actually nothing wrong with it. So if you catch your child masturbating, the most important thing is to explain to the child that this is something that should be done privately. Now you don't tell the child, depending on the age of course, you wouldn't tell a young child you don't masturbate pub publicly. But you would say something like, don't touch your private parts in public. And also explain to the children that they have to keep their private parts clean and their hands too, because if not, they can get an infection. So it's very important to teach the children about hygiene because if you don't keep it clean, you could get an infection, not just that, there will be kind of some unpleasant odor in the room and anybody coming into the room would know what has been going on. So with or without masturbation, it's very important that we talk to our children about sexual hygiene. Now the problem that most parents have with masturbation is that they think it is a sin, it is an offense. Over the years, previously, masturbation was never a sin or seen as a sin. In fact, in the olden days, the pharaohs would go every year to the river Nile and masturbate and ejaculate into the river Nile to make the river to be fertile. So it was the interpretation of different religions over the years that brought about this idea at one stage that masturbation was sinful. But most religions are beginning to correct themselves. I would start with Islam. In Islam today, the scholars are debating whether masturbation is halal, haram, makru, meaning is it allowed, forbidden, or tolerated? So if you are a Muslim, please go back to your Quran, go back to your religious um, teachers and really seek the knowledge about it so you know how to handle it and come to be at peace with yourself to explain to your children. In Christianity, I can talk a bit about Christianity. There is no portion in the Bible where masturbation is mentioned. There is no portion in the Bible where it is being called a sin. In fact, Jesus never ever spoke about it. 
But over the years, Christians started interpreting one portion of the Bible wrongly. And that was the story of Judah and his sons. Judah had three sons, Er, Onan, and Shelah. Now because Er was sinning so much, God decided to take his life. And Er had a widow, Tamar. Now, Judah said to his second son, Onan, go into your brother's wife, go and meet her, so that she can give your brother a son, because Er left no son. But Onan was angry. He didn't really want to do it because he felt that that child would not be his child. And according to the Jewish law then, it is the first son that inherits then his first son. So Onan never wanted to do that because that child would not be recognized as his child and gain the inheritance. So what Onan was doing was that he would go in to meet Tamar, sleep with her, but virtually practice coitus interruptus. He would come out and release his sperm onto the ground so that Tamar couldn't get pregnant. Now, instead of just refusing to go in to meet her, he went in to enjoy the sexual part but he wasn't ready to fulfill the obligation of giving her a male child. And he would drop his sperm on the ground. So God took his life too. It is from this story that this word onanate came from. Onanate, which means masturbate. So over the years, some Christians started interpreting it wrong and saying God killed Onan because he released his sperm onto the ground. But the main reason was because he refused to give, he honor his brother and give him a son. But people translated this releasing the sperm on the ground to mean masturbation because they said no sperm should be wasted. Virtually also, one shouldn't have sexual intercourse unless it is for procreation. So that was how it came about that Christians started to interpret it that onanism is a sin. Masturbation is not a sin. It's not something that should necessarily be encouraged. But it's also a good way of solving a problem that cannot be handled in another way. Raising children to be scared of masturbation or to feel it is evil is not necessarily the right thing. Perhaps if children were not raised with this indoctrination that is so evil, if we were diplomatic about this topic, we wouldn't have so much incidents of rape in the communities. Because ironically, women are more raped, more abused in countries where there is this very high moral castigation and emphasis on sex and things like masturbation. We should allow our children to grow up to feel comfortable with their bodies, to explore it without thinking it is evil. This will strengthen them this is our duty as parents to also talk about these instincts, these things that are so a part of our children. We have to explain it to them. Beating a child, putting pepper 
into the genitals, humiliating the child, is not the solution. It's not going to get rid of the sexual desire or the feelings in the body, in the physical flesh. In fact, when you start inflicting pain and humiliation, you might even be giving this child or teenager new desires because there are people that get stimulated by violence and pain and humiliation. All these are things that happen in the realm of sex. So those methods of humiliation, beating and pain are very, very wrong methods to use in trying to give a child sexual orientation or curb the desires of a child. Talk to the child with respect. Explain to the child about masturbation about the desires in their body, that it is a normal thing, but it shouldn't like take up their whole life or define them. Explain it to them politely. Don't let them feel dirty or inferior because they have these feelings. And you go a long way to raising children that are balanced mentally and emotionally. Because today, this topic of sex, sexual orientation, desires, is a topic we really, really have to think about. And we have to face it in a very realistic manner. If not, our children will not be equipped to cope in the world as it is today.